So I want to share a few different thoughts tonight. We have been, been trying to take some time to really look at sanctification and different aspects of it as I've been studying and uh, been sharing them with you. And how important it is that um, we have a time of coming together as believers that we can study the Word of God, we can look at it, because God has set some guidelines and standards up by which we, the church, can grow. And so in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number uh, 11, I'm going to read those two verses, 11 and 12. The Word of God says, and He gave some. And uh, God does the calling, doesn't He? Amen. He, he ordains it in heaven. He speaks it in heaven. And it comes forth on earth. And as He does that, it is for the perfecting. It's for the growing and the sanctification of the saints. Amen. And so the Word of God says... Uh, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry to the edifying of the body of Christ. We're talking about sanctification, so God has set up a standard, God has set up a model, God has set up a plan by which the church can uh, be perfected. Now, we are perfect in the sight of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, but yet God wants to perfect us because we still are working on our old nature, and that's going to be a continual work until He comes. We won't have any more temptation. Amen. We won't struggle with the flesh. Isn't that going to be a wonderful day that we won't struggle with the flesh? Amen. Uh, when we get to heaven. And so the Word of God says that He gave. Uh, it's God who does the calling. He decides in heaven. It's carried out on earth. And uh, the Bible says some apostles. And so what are apostles? Uh, who are those who, who are called to be apostles? Apostles. Uh, 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 and so we look and we find that they're the ones in the book of Acts and the epistles. Uh, these apostles uh, doesn't uh, they, they, they give uh, scriptural insight into the church. And so here are these apostles that God calls to be ministers. Uh, they're they're, they're uh, uh, and in a very high way, in a very powerful way, God calls them to give doctrine, to give direction, uh, to, to give uh, 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 the, the moving and teaching of the operation of the Spirit as He calls apostles, and then prophets, those who will uh, uh, foretell and foretell. So when you think about those prophetic works, we think about the, the foretelling things that are going to come, but they're also forth telling, which is uh, 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 concerning things that are presently on our agenda, things that are right now. And so we need to, you know, we're living in an hour in which we need men of God to hear from God. We need pastors to hear from God. We need evangelists to hear from God. We need teachers on every level to hear from God so that they can tell us the things that are forthcoming. What's happening? How does God want us to handle this? And they will tell things that, that are forthcoming, uh, the, uh, uh, these prophets. And so evangelists, we think of them uh, perhaps of the role of, uh, of, of what an evangelist does, uh, uh, preaching and teaching, but reaching the lost as well. Uh, by some means, we're all called to be evangelists. Reaching out and, and, and sharing the gospel. And then there are pastors. What are pastors? Pastors are those that 
God puts as shepherds of the flock. God puts them there because He wants them to love the flock, to teach the flock, to tend to the flock, to keep them safe, to keep them uh, in boundaries, to keep them in a way that they are uh, 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 they have the ointment when they are sick, uh, they're led. So God gives pastors. And it's so important that all these roles be fulfilled for the perfecting and the edifying of the saints. And then teachers. Now, the, the, the idea of teacher is this. It is uh, really in the Greek, it means an instructor, one who helps others learn. Aren't you glad for good teachers? I mean, on every level of life, you can probably remember someone who taught you and then it clicks. And, and different people learn differently. So teachers find that uh, that role that, that, that helps their student best learn. And so teaches and instructs. Thank God for teachers in the church that, 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 that instruct. But we also, uh, and those are just vague. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily go deep into things, but, but what I want to really focus on is for the perfecting of the saints. Each one of us here tonight needs to be equipped for service to God. And so we need those who will teach and teach truthfully the things of God. It's interesting. I had a conversation with someone today, and um, I'm going to be cautious because I'm fearful sometimes uh, things won't help. Um, uh, I had a conversation with someone today who uh, 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 is a Methodist minister, and coming up this week, the Methodists are deciding on allowing homosexual pastors to uh, pastor in the Methodist church. Now, I want you to remember, you know, we hear names like John Wesley, that's where the, the Methodist movement, uh, and so uh, these, it's, it's coming about. And, uh, and so as, as we were talking, um, you know, what would John Wesley say if he were here? But greater yet, what does Jesus say? And what does God's word say? What does God's word say? And so that's where we look at the word of God. And we find what God's word has to say. You know why? Because we need to hear the truth of God's word. That we can perfect it in our life for the equipping, for the edification of the saints. And, and the Bible says, for the work of the ministry. Do you know what the work of the ministry is? The work of the ministry is this. Brother Eli, there are different folds of the ministry, but the fold of the ministry is this, that the redemptive work of Jesus Christ may be taught and carried out in the lives of souls. God help us that we perfect, we perfect the Word of God in us. And so perfecting of the saints really... In, in the Greek itself means to equip for service, restoring anything to its proper place. How many of you, when you have uh, tools that you're to use or you're to do something, you like to be equipped? I don't like when someone just throws a curveball at me. I don't like to be put on the spot. I like to be equipped, that I can think about things, that I'm prepared for things. I like when I have jobs to do that I have the right equipment to do it. It means a lot. Brother Doug does it when you, you're, you're going to do a job. Um, Brother Craig, you know all about that in your business now, that you're equipped to do that. And so God's plan is for us as believers to be equipped. That's why we have the coming together of saints, amen, in church. That's why it's important to be in church. That's why you're here tonight. You are equipping yourself for the kingdom of God and you're equipping yourself for service because without a, a, a proper explanation of biblical doctrine, there is no spiritual growth. And so that's what sanctification is tonight. When we equip ourselves with biblical doctrine, I'm not talking about finding what, what, is, what, is, what is the temperature of, uh, 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 of the hour in which we live. We're not looking for that. We're not looking to be uh, 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 
a, 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 a thermometer that we just register with everything round about us. But we are looking to be a thermostat so that we set the standard. And how is the standard set? It is set through the Word of God and equipping ourselves biblically by what God wants us to be. The perfecting or the equipping of the saints. As I was praying today for our service, this thought came to my mind. And we have, we have Tuesday night Bible study. And I thought, God, this is what I would like for us to be. I would like to call Tuesday night TNT. When you think of T, uh, TNT, what do you think about being explosive and moving things? I want Bible study to be explosive in the Word of God that we move the flesh. That we move barriers by faith. And so, uh, uh, to think that, thought, that thought of TNT, Tuesday night teaching. Amen. TNT that helps us be equipped as saints to, 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 to do the service that God's called us to. And God's called us all to service. Whether he's, he's called on, on, on whatever level, as I said, he calls pastors, he calls, he calls evangelists and prophets and, and teachers, and, 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 and he calls apostles, he calls God, it's, 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 it's set in heaven and it's fulfilled on earth. God help us to do that for the perfecting of the saints. And when we look at that word, uh, we, there's, there's only one pastor, well, it would be a monster if we had many, many, and there's lots of heads, right? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe if you're a bigger church. Church and you need it to maintain things. I understand that, uh, but 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 uh, one pastor. But yet God can minister within the church body. There can be teachers. There can be those that are used in prophetic roles, and so it all comes together for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of saints. And what a responsibility it is for every believer to be equipped with the Word of God. Amen. Turn with me to Galatians. Galatians. Galatians chapter number 3. I started out tonight intentionally reading from Ecclesiastes, talking about how important it is, that threefold cord, and how important for us to be blended together not only with other believers, but most of all, we're limited together with Jesus Christ. And that, that cord is not broken. And so, as believers, if we're going to be equipped for the ministry, if there's going to be the perfecting of the saints, then there needs to be that inside of us that we know that we have died with Christ and we are resurrected with Christ and we are resurrected in the of life. That is sanctification. That is sanctification tonight. So when we look at Galatians in chapter number 3, let me start in verse number 1. And I'm sorry if I seem random, but I just have so many thoughts I want to share tonight. And uh, I believe that the Lord will help us. Amen. We look at the Old Testament. There are many types that are uh, examples that are pointing to the cross, the crucifixion, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 we, we can identify that we were, we were once dead in sin, but now we are dead to sin. That is what sanctification is. Let me say it again. We were once dead in sin, but now we're dead to sin. Because we've, we've, we've been saved. Amen. Sanctification starts at salvation. We are instantaneously sanctified, but we will continue to be progressively sanctified. The perfecting of the saints. Uh, the saints, uh, 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 Paul, he addressed them. Amen. Uh, 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 becoming saints. Uh, we've been walking in that place where, where we are sanctified. And so... Uh, 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 we look at Romans chapter number 6. It much talks about uh, us being dead in sin, but now being alive in Christ. And so when we look at Galatians, it's just like a reiteration. He says, um, Galatians chapter number 3, uh, verse number 1 through 4. Oh, uh, oh foolish Galatians. Uh, 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 you know what Paul's addressing? He says, Galatians, you're foolish. You don't have a good perception. You need to get your eyes on Jesus Christ and perceive things, amen, through the cross. It, is, it, 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 it makes you cross-eyed and it gives you 20-20 vision. How about that? Amen. 
Get cross-eyed and have 20-20 vision that will give you perception of what is right. And so he says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched, bewitched you? Who has, who has manipulated you? Who has, who, has, who has changed your perception from the truth? Uh, 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 that you should not obey the truth. What is the truth? It is there is one way, amen, and that is Jesus Christ crucified and dying in the cross, amen, but living in Christ. Uh, he goes on now to say, before whose eyes uh, uh, Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Amen. It's already been preached. It's already been established. Amen. The way to life, the way to please God is through Jesus Christ and the work of the cross. There's no other way. Amen. So don't be persuaded in any other way. He says, this only would I learn of you. I, I, I want you to, to know. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? What does it take to be born again? Is it works of the law? No, the law within itself, we can never obtain to. We can never please God. We can never keep all the law. And so trying to do it on our own, amen, that's what legalism is when we try to do it by a law and so by the blood of Jesus Christ and through the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen, that has to be the center of our affection. When we live a life of sanctification, we will keep Christ and the cross at the center. The most important thing. He says, uh, uh, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by, uh, or, or by the hearing of faith? Thank God for the hearing of faith. Amen. Trusting Jesus. He said, are you so foolish having begun in the Spirit? Amen. What, what the sanctification that we've been talking about, the Spirit of God sanctifies us. It's the Spirit of God that does the work in us at salvation. Are you foolish having begun in the Spirit? And are you now per, per, uh, per, made perfect by the flesh? And so he's saying this. He said you can try all kinds of things to sanctify yourself. But you're not going to do it by the flesh. You can say, I'm going to abstain from this. I'm going to try to do this. Uh, you know, when, when folks try to live holy, when you try to do it by the flesh, you're going to fail. But when we do it through the Spirit of God, amen, God, help me to live a holy life. How do we live holy? How do we grow in grace? How are we rooted? How are we grounded? Amen. As believers, sanctification really is that of being rooted and grounded. And the only way to do it is through the Spirit of God, allowing the Word of God to work. Once again, we come together as believers. God has ordained ministry that it allows us to hear the Word of God that is doctrinally sound. And as we hear it, then the Spirit of God helps us to grow in our faith. Amen. He says, uh, have you suffered so many things in vain? You, you've suffered persecution because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Don't throw it away. If it is in vain, which he trusts it's not in vain, he therefore ministers to you the Spirit and the works of miracles among you does does he it by the work of the law or by the hearing of faith? We know it's by the hearing of faith. And so we look at the cross and we understand that we are sanctified because we serve a resurrected Savior. It is historically true. So when, when you hear that word B.C. or A.D., B.C. meaning before Christ, A.D. Uh, meaning an, uh, Anno Domini, uh, which means the year of our Lord. So everything changed with Christ. So historically, every time we write the date, we give historic fact to that Jesus Christ is alive. Amen? Every time we write the date, we do it every day. We change it every day. But historically, we say, I serve a risen Savior. Amen. Amen. And we know that it is 
that, that not only is it sacred history, but it is sound theology. Everything about the Word of God is based upon Jesus Christ, His death, uh, His crucifixion, His burial, and His resurrection. So if we can die with Him, we can also be resurrected with Him. We who are, who are once dead in sin, now is dead to sin because of Jesus Christ. And we need to continue to be dead to sin. That's why there is a sanctifying work that is done every day in our life. We respond to life to live us. We respond to life, how? Through the Word of God. Because we want to do it appropriately as the Spirit of God leads us. And so it, it, it's a sacred fact. It's a, a sound theology. But it's also a fact of spiritual experience. He's saying to these Galatians, he said, wait a second. Haven't you already suffered many things? You know what Christ has done for you and in you. And you've already suffered persecution for that. Listen, don't now start walking in the flesh and after the flesh and after all kinds of winds of doctrines. And don't try to do it by legalistic things and by the law. Amen. Live by the Spirit of God. You've already had the experience. Continue in this experience. Can I stop here for a moment? If we've really had a salvation experience, we will be as Paul challenges these Galatians. Then we will continue in the experience by faith. Do you trust God by faith? in the sanctifying areas of your life. Last week we talked about Daniel and how that Daniel purposed in his heart. He tried God. Did he know that he would be fair in 10 days? No, no. He didn't know that. He believed God by faith. And by faith, God rewarded him. When we take God by faith, we can trust Him that we're going to be fairer and better than any other situation. That's why we have to believe by faith and not by works of our own righteousness because that is legalism. Do I believe in holiness? Do I believe that we need to live holy, that we need to be different? Absolutely, I believe that. But I don't believe that I do that for my own salvation. I think I do that because God is sanctifying me and taking me deeper in Him. And I trust Him more than I trust anything in this world because my heart and all my affections is in heaven. They're not in this world. We are living in everything that is temporal here. The older I get, the more I realize how temporal things are. Everything about this life is temporal. Everything. But everything about that life is eternal. So let's not base our life on the temporal, but let's live our life and our affections by the eternal that will change us and root us and ground us. It's amazing because, you know, we've seen it in, in our own flooding here uh, uh, several weeks ago there on Peter's Mountain how that, uh, you know, the, the trees that were there, uh, they slid because of the mud. Uh, the, the grounding of what it had wasn't secure. We have secure grounding in Jesus Christ. Amen. Secure grounding. And we can trust Him. We have to let our roots go deep. And so not only do we share in His, his resurrection, but when we look at verse number 1, uh, that He was crucified, uh, we also know that He is going to return. We, we know that, that, that uh, uh, where He ministers to now is, is, is our need. Amen. But where, where does He minister at? Uh, where Christ sitteth in heavenly places. Uh, let me read. Let me go to Colossians. Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 1 through 4. The Bible says, If you be risen with Christ... Amen. Are you risen with Him? He said, seek those things which are above. So if we're risen with Him, we're seeking those things which are above. And then He goes on down to say, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Uh, let, let's talk about this for a few moments. 
Now, if we are risen with Christ, amen, we're dead to sin. We were once dead in sin. Now we're dead to sin. And we're resurrected with Jesus Christ. He overcame sin. He overcame Satan. He overcame the whole realm of Satan's uh, uh, hellish ways and all of his ends and all of his army. He overcame that on the cross. And so if we are risen, amen, he is risen again. Uh, the Bible says, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right and of God. Praise God. The work is finished. It's already done. What does it mean that he sits on the right hand of God? Our victory in Christ is already done. We don't have to try to attain it through law. Amen. It's done through the work of Christ on the cross. He's gone before us. He sits on the right hand of God. He's ever making intercession for us tonight. And this is a promise that one day he is coming back. It's finished. He's done the first work. He came the first time. He's coming the second time to redeem us only Him. And when He comes, He's looking for a church that's kept Himself without spot and without wrinkle. So, His position is strength. You know why we can make it? Because Hebrews 7.25 says that He prays for us. So when you're struggling, Brother Dove, and when I'm struggling, I have someone who's praying for me. The work is finished. He has confidence in the work that's done, Brother Justin. And so He's praying for us. The, we can't make it. He's in the position of satisfaction. Seek those things which are, uh, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. So the only thing that can really satisfy us is heavenly godly things. Not earthly things. Set our affections on how it satisfies. So his position. And then he goes on down to say, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Listen to that. If we are dead to sin, we were once dead in sin, now we are dead to sin, sister God. This is awesome. The Bible says that we need to set our affections on things above, not on things of this world, and know that we can make it. God is working a sanctified work in our life, whether we like. Do you know why? Because we are hid in Him. Amen. You want to talk about strength tonight? Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that are hiding out this week in all types of storm shelters. And I hope their storm shelters work. I, I want them to. I, I don't want to hear of any catastrophes or any loss. But, but, but you know, they're seeking a shelter, a place to hide. Let me tell you, more important than just a temporal storm of life, but our, et our soul, our eternity, our man that will never die. Amen. We need to hide him in Christ because in Christ we are safe. Amen. So why are we rooted in him? Why do we grow in him? Why are we founded in him? Why do we live a sanctified life? Because I'm dead to this world and I live in Christ and I hide in him. He is my shelter. He is my security. He is the one that is my all in all. So I'm hiding in him and if I'm going to be in him, I've got to be dead to sin. So tonight, our walk and our sanctification is because we're identified with God in Christ. Well, now you're going to go hunt here in a couple weeks. And I know what you're going to do. You're going to get into camel marching. You know why? Because you're going to hide. And I bet your camo doesn't look like you would blend in to the walls of this church. And I bet your camo uh, doesn't uh, have purple and orange and uh, uh, all kinds of crazy colors in it. Now you're blending in to the environment that you're in. And so if we're found in Christ, we will be found in the character and the nature of Christ. Hang on, i got to move on quick. When Christ who is our life, shall appear. So we share in his resurrection. We share in his resurrection. But we who live a sanctified life will also share in his rapture. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, you know what? We are dead to sin. We no longer live therein. 
We were, our life, all we knew living was in sin, but now we're dead to sin, and the only living that we know is in Christ. The Bible says, when he shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Amen. This is the most amazing thing. Because, Brother Dennis, when we appear with Him in glory, this body is going to be changed. Amen. This temporal is going to put on that of eternal. And this corruptible will be put on incorruption. And this body that we fight the desires of the flesh, because that's what we're born into, no longer are we going to fight that anymore. But when we shall uh, see Him, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Right now I'm dead to sin. I live in Christ. But one day because I'm a participator in His, in his resurrection, and I'm a participator in his, in his rapture that, 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 that he went away, he ascended into heaven and, and I'm a participator that, that he sits at the right hand of God and I hide in him and he prays for me one day because I'm living the sanctified life that he's called me to, one day I will be a participator in the resurrection when he comes, out uh, of the rapture when he comes back for me. This old body will be raptured out of here and we shall be changed. Amen. I love it because right now I live the life of Christ. But one day His Lordship will completely be over me and I will be changed. That's why we live a sanctified life. That's why we want to know more. I hear you. I was reading in Colossians chapter number three. Let's jump back uh, to chapter number three. Let's jump back to verse number chapter number two. And I'm going to be quick. I'm going to try to finish up in ten minutes. Be time to talk. And uh, so Paul was talking to the church at the the Colossian church. And let me just start reading verse number eight. He said this once again. Remember, we're talking about being dead to sin. Because we're a participator of the death of Jesus Christ. But we're a participator of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're alive in Him. Paul says, Beware lest any man spoil you through, vain, uh, through philosophy and vain deceit. Anything that is not according to the doctrine of the Word of God. Spoil is, is come in and take over you. It's not like a banana spoils. It's come in and just overtake after the traditions of men, you know, anything that 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 man comes up with that is contrary to the plan of God, to the work of Jesus Christ, uh, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. The Bible says, "For in Him, who is this Him? This is Jesus Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. In Jesus Christ, God is complete." Now, I'm moving a little quicker than what I planned. So, Jesus bore the totality of God, the deity of God, though He's a Son and He's part of the tripart nature of God, the Trinity. He, God was complete in Him, and the Bible says, and you are complete in Him. Everything about us tonight to be able to live victorious, Every part of him tonight for us to live godly and holy and pleasing is found in Jesus Christ. Don't get going down some road after some tradition of some person. I don't want to be caught up in tradition. All of us have tradition, and some of it is good. I like some tradition. I, I do. I mean, I like tradition of Christmas, and I like tradition of having turkey. You know, and stuffing and the whole works. I like that tradition. It ain't so bad. You know? Well, at least the physical part. The, the, the enjoyment <laughs> of that. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. All right, before we get to uh, a debate that I don't want to get into. So some tradition isn't bad, but when we get tradition, that it says this tradition is going to sanctify you. This tradition is what's going to get you to heaven. This, that's, that's tradition. The only thing that's going to get us to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ and the doctrine of the Word of God. 
And so he goes on now to say, more complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. I want you to know that not only is he in charge of the church, but he is in charge of the enemy. And I said to you before many times that just like Job, amen, God said, you're like a dog on a leash. You can only go as far as the leash allows you. The enemy says, this is all the farther the enemy can go. So when he lies against you and brings condemnation and tells you you can't make it and you can't please God. Wait a second. Be found in Christ. Amen. Because he's the deity of the Godhead. The word of God says it. And in him is all power over all principalities. He's in control. Trust him tonight with your soul. Trust him with living holy. Trust him with being grounded and rooted and having confidence in him. And the Word of God goes on down to say, In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. We could turn back to Genesis and we could read, uh, let me see, I got myself, in Genesis chapter number, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah. Genesis chapter number, Where God made a covenant that was an everlasting covenant with Abraham. I have this written down here. It was an everlasting covenant with Abraham of circumcision. And where is that right? I don't know. Anyway, it, nonetheless, you can look it up. I want to get the great detail in it. Anyway, God had asked Abraham to, to take him and his sons and any of the servants, anyone who was a part of them, and he wanted them to be circumcised. Now it was it was it, 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 it was what is practiced today in little boys. They were to do it on the eighth day when the clotting factor was good, uh, that they would not have problems with bleeding. But it was it was a covenant with God, but it was it was part of a physical covenant, but it was part of an eternal covenant, is what the word of God says. And it was really a sign and a type of grace, the covenant of grace. If we are going to be in this relationship with God, our hearts have to be circumcised. Our flesh has to be cut. And we have to say, I'm dead to the flesh and I live in Christ. The Bible says, in whom you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. How are we circumcised through the flesh? How is there a cutting of the flesh? Through the cross of Jesus Christ. He died and He overcame all of sin so that we can become victors. The law could not do it. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, and, and, and putting off of the body of, of sin, uh, of the flesh, uh, by the circumcision of Christ. Amen. He did it on the cross. The Spirit of God makes it real in our life and gives us the same ability. Buried with Him in baptism. This isn't water baptism. This is dying with Him, the death of the cross. Amen. Wherein you are also risen with Him through faith of the operation of God who hath raised Him from the dead. Aren't you glad that we're now dead to sin, but we live in Jesus? Amen. Amen. Sanctification is living in Christ and putting off of the flesh. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, speaking of separation from God, has He quickened together with you, having forgiven all your trespassing, trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances on the law. What is this? This is the law that we cannot attain to. God said, you can't attain to the law. So I give you my son, Jesus Christ. That's where sanctification is. Not in the law that we can't attain to, but through the work of the cross. He said the law was contrary to us, and we could not keep it as far as we tried. And took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Do you ever really just think about what Jesus did? He was a fulfillment of the law so that we could live a sanctified life pleasing to God. Because now the Spirit will gladly among us that we can please God by a sanctified life. So
So don't be overcome by traditions. Don't become overcome by ways of man. Keep your eyes on Jesus. How often have we let our eyes off of Jesus, what someone else has said, what someone else expects of us, what we think someone else would say, what does the Word of God say about it? And having spoiled principalities and powers, how of Satan, he made a show of opening triumphant over them. And he goes on to talk about meats and days, you know, um, which are a shadow of things. Uh, uh, he says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday or a new moon or of Sabbath, which are shadows of things which are to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward. We need to make sure that we stay focused upon Jesus Christ. Don't allow false doctrine to come in. The church has become such a worship center that everybody comes as you are without ever kneeling on the cross and leaving as he the church has forgotten about living a sanctified life. Let's get back to John Wesley for a moment. Do you know the, the, the whole movement of Pentecost started through sanctification? And the studying, John Wesley wanted sanctification, uh, it is life. And then the challenge to read the book of Acts showed them sanctification. As the Spirit of God walks in the world. Does the Spirit of God meet with you every day? Because you need the Spirit of God. Are you aware that you are dead to sin but identified in Christ? And do you have your affections on things above knowing that you're hid in Christ? Or are you more worried about the temporal? God wants us to be focused on the eternal. I'm done. I'm more sorry. I hope something I said tonight helped you. And then, like I said, I want it to be TNT, Tuesday night teaching. Just time. Anyone have anything to say?